one of pole barn building. Materials are being delivered. Next truck apparently will have the equipment, uh, man lifts and things like that that are needed to uh, start. So he's gonna offload this trailer onto the ground what and then uh, they'll come in with the equipment and then it won't be uh, a few more days before they actually start construction. So day one, materials delivered. So we got the materials landed on the ground here. Those are all the poles in the back there. Lots of two by fours, two by tens, different things for headers and purlins and stuff like that. All the metal is in the back there. We went with the traditional red barn look with the gray roof and white trim. So there's our red barn color and gray roof panels and the trusses. The 42 foot long uh, trusses for the roof. So, uh, before they begin building, I'm locating the corners of where we want the building to be and using some simple high school math. Imagine that, it actually came in handy. Uh, using Pythagorean theorem, which of course I'm not actually calculating, I'm typing into Google, but uh, if I type these numbers in, which is a 40 foot wide uh, front over here, and a 70, no, six, sorry, 68 uh, foot long run back there. I get 79 feet for my diagonal. And so if I just take two tape measures, I tie one to that corner of the barn, pull it out 40 feet. That's our width. I tie one to that back corner over there. I pull it out the 79. And the point at which they intersect here is um, the point at which um, I'm going to drive that last post and that will make a perfectly square building. Now you might notice that's 40 over there. I'm at 46. That's because I wrapped the tape measure around the pole over there for six inches. So I'm just accommodating for that. But that's where we set our last post. And then we know that we have our four corners of our barn uh, perfectly square to each other and uh, ready to go. So moving right along. So today we're getting a new barn put in at the farm. They're drilling the holes right now, all around. They have the drill on the tractor. Drilling holes all over the space it's gonna go. Got their big lift, forklift. They're moving the concrete around so that they can pour it in and put in the posts. All the holes are drilled and now uh, they're setting all the posts into place. They kind of just loosely drop them all. So they're, they're hanging out in those holes and in the back corner over there you can see them starting to um, set them. So now they get some concrete in the bottom. They get uh, placed vertically so they're plumb and level and uh, they keep moving on around the whole building until they're all standing perfectly straight up in the air. That's what we got going on next. Well, here we are, end of day one. Uh, we have a nice 16 foot wide opening here to make sure we can get big equipment through. There'll be a man door in that little two foot section there. Poles are all standing way up high. I think we go like, what is the number? Like 26 feet, I think is the top. And the interior will have uh, 16 foot tall walls. Uh, that's to leave plenty of room for car lifts and to drive backhoes in and out and whatnot. Uh, they got all the posts are set into the ground, concrete, and the bottoms are all, you see those green bottoms, those are pressure treated, so they're safe for uh, contact with the ground. But here's the end of day one of construction. Morning of day two, they've got all these um, battens on everywhere that the siding will be attached to. And they're putting the uh, cleats up top there, just trying to catch right now. Um, those will hold the trusses to the building. Actually, every post is also notched so that it, it holds the uh, truss uh, every eight feet directly on the post. And then the rest of it's on that two by 12 header. And he says, uh, today they'll have all the framing done. Probably tomorrow, wrap the building and, and call it a day. Um, so moving right along.
Well, here we are, end of day two, and um, I would have had more footage. I did get some drone footage, but I would have had more, except for we got hit by a monsoon. Um, I haven't seen rain like this come down in a long time. Route 46 was flooded. It washed all the gravel out of our roads. And uh, if you go back into some earlier videos, um, we had a storm like this, uh, maybe, actually it was last year, I guess, where things got washed out too, but this was actually worse than that one. Um, but despite all that, they accomplished getting all the roof trusses on, building the eaves are all built. And uh, I believe tomorrow they're gonna start wrapping this thing in um, red barn siding. So pretty cool to see it all come together. It's the big uh, 16 foot by 16 foot garage door on this side and a 12 by 16 on that side. Um, actually, it's a 14, not a 16. 12 by 14 and a 16 by 14. But um, lots of space in here. All that cross bracing will come down after they get their um, their siding on. But uh, coming together. And then uh, we'll have to talk about the inside. I'll need to put down about four to six inches of gravel, level it out, and then pour concrete over this whole area too. Uh, this side of the barn is going to have all um, shelving all the way up and down, four foot wide shelving. That we can come in here with the skid steer and pick up stuff like they do at Home Depot. And then this side is going to have a car lift on it. And there'll be a, um, a loft area over there with a workshop underneath of it. So moving along. End of day three. Day three? No, nah, day two. Sorry. So the main structure of the barn is done. We have a roof, we have walls, we have openings, we have a door. Uh, we are waiting on the garage door company. There are no lifts available, so they uh, had to delay for another week and a half. And then the garage doors go in, but we've got a 16 foot wide by 14 foot tall door on this side, and a 12 by 14 on that side, so you can drive on through. And uh, today's job was putting down a gravel base so I laid in, this is uh, 50 tons down already. I got another 50 coming. Um, laying this down about even with the bottom of that skirt board there. So put down about six inches of gravel and packed it with our uh, 4,000 pound roller over there, vibratory roller, and it packs it down real tight, kind of like concrete again. Um, so I've got that other third down there of the barn to fill this week all along that edge. I'll fill that and strike it level and, and roll it uh, using a, a laser uh, level here to, to get our elevations. So there's a spinning laser right there. And then that stick, I just walk around and, and uh, touch it to the ground to find out if we're level. I actually mounted the receiver on the skid steer um, for the initial grading of this and it worked pretty well, not too bad. Um, really just gotta be close, but. Anyway, in here we have a 16 foot tall ceiling, trusses, and I have 10 250 watt LEDs that are gonna hang up there to light this place up. So making lots of progress and uh, hopefully after I get back from DC on a business trip, um, we'll be able to go ahead and pour concrete in here. Uh, this is a look towards the 16 foot side. And uh, we're gonna be able to drive in the 16 foot side out this 12 foot side. I gotta obviously get rid of this dirt and everything, clear this out and be able to go back around uh, to the left of the barn where there'll be a large parking area. So um, back here, this will be a large gravel lot, 
we'll be able to put all of our equipment back here that, that can stay outdoors. And that way, uh, back from my parents' house, which is way out there, uh, you won't see any machinery or anything. Just a, just a red barn. Uh, everything will be hidden behind it or inside of it. So, should be nice. Mm -hmm. 